Call to order the meeting of the Pasadena Independent School District Board of Trustees in special session on Tuesday, December 15th, 2020 by telephonic and or video conferences and in person in accordance with suspension of certain provisions of the Texas Open Meetings Act is authorized by the Governor of Texas and the state's Attorney General at 4.02 p.m. I've asked Mr. Kendrick if, uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry, board members present are um, Mr. Jack Bailey joining us by video conference, Kenny Fernandez, Marshall Kendrick, and myself, Vicki Morgan. And here comes Ms. Sullivan and Mr. Roberts. And Ms. Keanu is caught in traffic and she'll be here shortly. Board members absent, I've noted the ones that are not here yet. Ms. Keanu now is the only one not here. Let the record indicate that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting is duly called, and the notice of this meeting was posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The invocation today will be given by Mr. Kendrick and the pledges by Mr. Fernandez. If you'd stand, please. please. Father, we come to you today very thankful for the many blessings of God. We thank you for a district that continues to go beyond and above all things that could be expected to reach the kid needs of our kids. We thank you for the dedication and for the hard work that's been going on because I know it's been very difficult doing face-to-face -face and virtual. It's been a tough go and our teachers and employees have been working extremely hard and we thank you for them. We ask that you would keep them safe. We pray for those that have been affected by COVID or have lost loved ones, we pray that you'd watch over and protect them and, and may you share your grace upon them. We pray for those that stand in the front line of our defense, of our freedoms, our police, our firemen, our soldiers, and all those in the military. We ask that you'd be with them, especially during this holiday season. Protect them and their families. Father, we thank you for the time that we come to celebrate. We thank you for the time next week, and the week after our faculties and our teachers and our administrative people and children will have a chance to rest and recoup and get ready for a new year. Father, we thank you for the season that we have and we know the reason for the season. We thank you for sending your son. We might have eternal life and he is the reason for this season. In your name we ask. Amen. 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 Show me the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the Texas flag? On the, the Texas, Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to be Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we going to have a closed session? No. We will not have a closed session this evening, so we're going to X that out and move on to, hang on just a minute. Huh? Public comment. Public comments. Do we have any public comments? Okay. Um, consideration and possible approval of awards for medical stop loss coverage, self funded health plan CSP number 21P 009 LP to Sun Life Assurance Company of Canada via Stealth Partner Group for a cost of $3, uh, 3 million. $187,894. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Sullivan, seconded by Mr. Fernandez. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of additional funding for COVID-19 employee testing in the amount of $400,000. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Kendrick, seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Discussion? Question. Yes. Where is it going from 100000 to 400000 I'm going to let Tony Lopez come up and discuss what we've been experiencing thus far and how our insurance committee met and what their hopes are for the future. So when we started employee testing, we didn't know how it would be utilized by our employees. Um, as a matter of fact, I thought we were going to wind up and not have to, we'd have to pay a fee because we wouldn't have enough employees to be tested. But that was not the case. Our employees appreciate the service. And so um, I tried to take a daily average of how many people go and be tested. 
to get us to um, the spring break mark. And so um, that's where I came up with that amount. Um, our insurance committee met last week and we have determined that we're going to put out some different expectations for employee testing to where it is um, employees have to have symptoms or they have to have been exposed before we will move forward with testing. So that's where we came up with that amount. Well, was the hundred was a hundred thousand for a certain number of tests to, or, it's when it was, or was it or did the people who were doing the testing did they say that they would do the testing for a period of time for a hundred thousand no sir it's 125 dollars per person and we had no idea how much um so people are repeating that 125 Yes. Well, and there we do have repeaters right now, and that's sure. another thing that we're going to start um, working on is once people start repeating, we're going to be making phone calls. We don't want to necessarily say we're, we're no longer going to allow repeaters because yeah. you could be exposed this week, and then three weeks from now, you could be positive. And so we don't want to say we're not going to allow any repeaters, um, but we are going to dive in and ask some questions on those repeaters. So how many tests do you get for $125 a test? Um, how many? How many tests did we perform for a hundred thousand dollars at a hundred? Well, we are over the hundred thousand dollar mark, and so um, to this date, um, we're at two hundred and twelve thousand dollars that we have spent on testing at this okay, so to this date. So we spent two twelve, and so there's four hundred is to help cover that. Yes, sir, and and, and, and so get us that to will leave us. That will leave us one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars for testing. Yes, sir. And, and I may very well have to come back to you guys again. Um, I'm hoping that the um, restrictions that we're putting in place now will will help that not will help the money to go further. Our insurance committee um, wanted us to continue the testing. They felt like that that was a great service for our employees and our employees are very thankful for it. I mean, extremely thankful for it. Um, but also the insurance committee was committed to making sure we're protecting the money of, of our employees that, that contribute, you know, to our health fund. And they want to put those restrictions on. When we started, we simply just didn't know yeah. how, how, um, how much people would utilize it or not. So, so you can do 800 tests per $100,000. Yes, sir. So and you've got 7,000 employees, <laughs> 9,000 employees. Eight, we have about 8,100 employees. 8,100 employees. Uh -huh. well, that's really not bad. Eight, 800 <laughs> tests. Of course, you've doubled that now. So I guess you've got 60, you ran 1,600 tests. So we are... Um, the other piece of it is the campuses are going to start testing as well. And so some of those folks will get tested at the campus through the system that the state is providing. And so we're hoping that that will decrease our number of folks at the employee testing center as well. Okay. Are we just testing employees or are we testing anyone that's covered under their insurance? Plan? No, ma'am. We're only in testing employees right now. Thanks, John. Anything else? Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Um, Susan, please make note that Ms. Keanu is now here. <coughs> Consideration and possible adoption of board resolution providing for a local extension of the Family First Coronavirus Response Act, um, FFCRA, one-time paid sick uh, leave provisions. I can't read through this thing. Do I hear a motion? Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Kendrick, seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Discussion? So board members, as you know, uh, we had a, a federal law, and Tony, you correct me wherever I mess up, where we were able to provide 80 hours time per employee uh, because we were either quarantining them or having them at home because they were exposed or they were sick due to COVID. Of course, this expires on December 31st, as you know, and we are asking like many school districts across Texas that we extend that period for our school employees because you can imagine if you got COVID unfortunately in November or you had to be sent home because you were exposed due to work or, or some other exposure, uh, then you were taken care of by that act, but then if that happened to you in February, March, April, that would not be the case unless we brought this forward. So 
that was the reason for us bringing this forward. We did write our resolution prior to TASB putting theirs out, uh, but we mirrored what we had done in the spring that you had already approved. Any questions? Uh, you know what, I'll be truthful with you. I didn't see that it expired, I do now. I see it right there. I mean, you look at this thing for days and you don't see the expiration date. I kind of sit down here in this chair and wisdom just flows into me <laughs> and, I, and I see where the expiration date is. So I understand. Now, is this an amendment or did we... Re so this will not be an amendment to the original resolution. It will be a separate resolution specific for this particular issue. Okay, so this one starts... Because this one has a date on it, December 31st. Yes. This one stops. And this one here begins January 1st or? No. So the April 4th resolution addressed a number of items outside of just paid leave and in compensation for paid leave and in the extension of the FFCRA. So that resolution will remain in effect. And this the, one will? the April 4th amended resolution. Yes. Okay. And this is just an amendment to it. This is a new resolution to specifically address the FFCRA. Okay, but I'm thinking that you, we said we took this one from this one. We took portions of it to make sure the language in those two um, resolutions would be consistent with respect to the authorizations regarding compensation and leave that what were you, provided to the superintendent. So we wouldn't resend this one? No. And do another one? Not at this time, no. Okay, so are the, if, if this stuff, if what's in here expires, correct? No, it does not. It does FFCRA. not expire. It does so expire. The, the April 4th resolution does not expire until either the COVID pandemic ends or the board declares okay. um, that or, or rescinds that resolution. Okay. And, what, and this is an amendment to it? It is an additional secondary resolution. Those will be like holding hands side by side together. One addresses COVID in general and one addresses the FFCRA specifically. And let me just clarify for the board, since we put that resolution in place, I can't even count any number of things that I've done without bringing it to the board. Can, can y'all, I mean, I've always brought the items to yeah. the board. When, it's just in case we were to go back into a stay at home order like we were, unfortunately, in the spring and some decisions had to be made about purchases and some things had to be signed regarding grants and reimbursements from TEA. Um, but otherwise, my answer to cabinet members is always bring it to the board. And I'll, I'll sometimes hear, but we don't have to. And I always say, they know the answer, we're bringing it to the board. So that, that was definitely something we've discussed in cabinet. We yes. appreciate that. And, and thank you for clarifying. Fred, do you have other questions? No, uh, I do. I'll go okay. in a second. Yeah. Jody. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, number C. In the proposed resolution? Yes. Yes. In that it states including pre premium payments to certain employees. I visited with the superintendent regarding this, but do you think it would be good if there was some specification as to the employees, like non-certified employees or something, so that it wouldn't be so open-ended? So I would hesitate to put any kind of restrictions in place because we don't know what um, the granting of additional hours of paid leave is going to, how that's going to be interpreted later um, by other agencies. So for example, if the federal government decides at some point that under um, FEMA, we can seek reimbursement for the funds that we paid in this situation, we wanna make sure that the current resolution has the appropriate authorizations to make those payments, right? That pay, and to grant that paid leave and we don't want to limit ourselves in the resolution and not be eligible for funding later because they determined that well, this was a premium payment because they weren't originally entitled to it under their contract. Does that make sense? So it's, it's not something that is designed to just be very open-ended. And of course, the superintendent would still have to follow other applicable policies. 
premium payments being one of those topics. Um, but it would still grant her the authorization to work within the flexibility that we've given her if the need arose. She would still, of course, have to advise you of any action that she took pursuant to the resolution um, moving forward. But if that specification was in there, wouldn't that give her broader authorities without having to come to the board for something? It, it, it I mean, I guess I'm a little bit confused. So it does, we tell her, we, the resolution says that she has the authority to make those decisions regarding premium payments. I don't, I, what I was saying is I did not want to limit that to a specific classification of employees because we don't know how these paid this granting of additional paid leave is going to be interpreted later. I guess the word certain is the touchy word. Right, but remember that we're not granting this leave to all employees because it will be only, it's a one-time paid leave provision. Sorry, Marisol, I'm having trouble. I know so the thing's in the way. It's a one-time paid leave provision. So those that have already utilized this paid 80 hours of leave will not be eligible to receive an additional 80 hours of leave in the spring. Each employee will only get it one time. So they'll either get it under the provisions of the FFCRA when it's effective, or they'll get it pursuant to the board resolution later. I mean, could a word like maybe qualifying employees or? Certainly. Something for a definitive as to who it's going to affect. And it leaves it up to the interpretation of Dr. Powell, right? I mean, I, I, I see like- it's She's not gonna do anything. She's assured me that no steps will be taken until the board is advised, correct? Yes. And, and we're, we're, I mean, and well, there's we're not no questioning that. that at all. Right. Just, and, we just don't want to run into an issue where someone says later, I'm one of those people. Yes. You know what I'm saying. Um, I deserve. That's all. I, and, I, and I understand that. The reason why this particular phrasing is in this resolution is because it was also included in the April 4th one, or the, sorry, the April 3rd amended resolution. We wanted to ensure that those provisions were as close to each other as possible. So to the extent they were looking at the two provisions later, again, they're parallel. They're aligned with each other. The, the granting and authorization provided to the superintendent is the same. We don't have to get into this back and forth over, did the new one change it or not? Um, and really, even though it says it, it incorporates you know, the prior and, and does that, um, we still wanted to make sure the language on the face of the document was as close right to the other as possible for what those you're really trying to do is make sure that you cover the basis really if we get federal funding yes and give us the authority to make you know or give us the ability to make those to make the arguments to that That's we right. will need to make sure. at that point right to mm -hmm. say that the proper authority was granted to the superintendent prior to the need to exercise it, which is generally, Carla can correct me, what FEMA requires. Well, no one else can take the authority to say, hey, it, it, you know, I'm one of those people, except for Dr. Powell. So, and Carla deals with all the FEMA reimbursements, so she's been uh, definitely involved in what the wording is that they're looking for when she's trying to make those claims. You want to say anything, Carla, about it? Yeah, one quick thing. On the FEMA reimbursements, any time that I have to do like premium pay. Speak a little louder. Any time on the FEMA, the FEMA reimbursements, it, they always ask for the resolution. And one of the things that has to be in place prior to any type of reimbursement is a resolution has to happen. And on the wording of the resolution, they just want to say certain employees. Because if we get into saying qualified employees, then I've got to have another resolution to say, how did you qualify those employees? Employees. And that's just because of FEMA. And that's where the wording comes from. And that's just in case we get reimbursed from FEMA. They want to see the wording to say uh, certain employees, not, you know, they did they qualify because then we have to prove how did they qualify? What did they do? And it's more resolutions that we would have to come. So we try to keep the resolution as basic to cover everything for FEMA reimbursement. So when I'm trying to claim everything back, I can get it back without any issues. Understood. 
Any other questions? What is the what is the dates on on the yeah res or it, I can't pronounce it resolution number one that started in April. Yes. Now we have resolution number two, that is the sister to resolution yes. number one. Yes. What is the deadline on resolution number two? So resolution number two will either expire automatically without further um, action needed by this board on July. 31st of 2020, which is the end of the contract. 21. 21, sorry, excuse me, 2021, July 30th, 2021, um, which is the contract end year or the end of the school year, school year um, for us. Or in the event that the federal or state government passes some other sort of legislation that would require something similar, any other additional granting of leave or, you know, leave requirements like that that would be placed upon the district it will expire upon their passage of any future um, legislation or, you know, action. Which could happen. Yeah. Which, yes, which we, you know, would be reasonably anticipated yeah. at this point. One last question. Yes. Why didn't we just amend it? I, I didn't want to amend the original resolution because it focused very heavily on the initial premium payments that we were paying during our closures and the differences um, in how those were awarded. And I wanted to ensure that we didn't again confuse an issue and somehow by the time we got to a standpoint where we were seeking or getting reimbursement from FEMA that we were having trouble because those provisions were not included or there was questions about why we were authorizing those specific provisions now and not earlier it was cleaner in my personal opinion also right in the light of the fact that we don't know how long the covid pandemic is going to last and we may want that april resolution to still be in effect after july 31st of 2021 um and so it was cleaner in my opinion to do you know the sister resolution with this one specifically focusing on the ffcra um rather than a very complicated resolution in which certain provisions might have expired at one time and other ones would survive. And does that make a little bit of sense? We just, it was, we we're trying to keep the FFCRA piece a little bit separate so that it is clearer and cleaner when we go to look at documentation for reimbursement or any issues later. Any other questions? Jack, you're quiet. You have any questions? No, y'all are covering it, I think. Okay. Okay, no more discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, motion carries. Consideration of possible approval of the amended 2020-2021 budget for the Region 4 Regional Day School Program for the Deaf and further action to authorize the superintendent or designee to, to approve future amendments that lower the district's financial obligations under this agreement. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Sullivan, seconded by Mr. Fernandez. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Okay, the board is going to do uh, begin our team building session with Dr. Robbie McGowan. 1 p.m. And I declare this meeting adjourned. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Yes. <laughs>